Everything you walk through, there's a purpose for it. Everything you walk through, if you're in the fire, I've allowed it. Did you know that gold can only be refined in the fire? Gold can only be refined in the fire. Gold can only be refined in the fire. It only has value after the fire. Before the fire, it's the potential of value. But after the fire is when everyone wants it. Because it's the other metals that can't hang in the fire. It's the other metals that have to be melted off the gold. It's the fire of testing that God allows us to walk through that is purifying the call of God. If you want to be called, if you want to be chosen, if you want to be someone that's hot or cold going for God, you're going to have to walk through some fires. I, I don't know what your fire is. All our fires look different. We, we may be in one together right now, but, but God only allows the fire because he loves you. He trusts you. Remember Job? God allowed him to walk through fire. You know why? Because Satan showed up in heaven. And he's like, you know, who do you got? And God said, have you considered my boy Job? God is the one who put his name up on the thing. It wasn't Satan that came up with Job. It was God. I thought God loved Job. He does. He knew who Job was, even if Job didn't know how powerful he was. He knew the gold inside of Job would only come out through the fire of testing. Satan so said, he only, he only loves you because you've protected him. He said, well, then I'll take down his protection. You just can't kill him. And Satan comes in and destroys his life, ravages his life. Job says this comment. Look at this comment he says about the gold. Job 23.10. He knows the way I take, and when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Then look what he says in continuation. He says, my feet, verse 11, have closely followed his steps. I have kept his way without turning to the side. I, have not, I, I didn't ask for out of the fire. I worship him in the fire. I have not departed from the commands of his lips, and I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Job became valuable because he, was, he allowed God to put him through the fire that created passion in his life. I know maybe you're walking through some things that have made you a cynic and made you lukewarm. Don't let the fire make you smell like smoke. But let the fire burn off everything that is not of God. Gold has to be mined. It has to be dug for in riverbeds and rocks. Miners in biblical time would dig to find raw ore containing precious metals. And after it's dug into, it has to be crushed. The rock has to go through crushing. The ore has to go through crushing to break it into smaller pieces so it can be easier to separate the valuable gold pieces from the surrounding rock. I don't know if you're in the digging process or you're in the crushing process, but all of it is a process to call you to a higher level. And then after the initial extraction, there's the refining process, smelting it with fire. The primary method for gold in ancient times was, was the crushed ore would be placed in a furnace and heated to an extremely hot temperature. The process involved burning away the impurities or dross of the other metals. God was not trying to kill the gold. He was trying to kill what was killing the gold. Mm. The fire you've been through, if it didn't kill you, you found the gold. Whatever is not with you anymore was not meant to be with you anymore. It was a part of you at a time, but God crushed it off or he burnt it off. And now he's revealing your true identity as his gold that has been tested by the fire. The intense heat causes the gold to melt and separates it from the impurities of the others. As the liquid gold melts the impurities rise to the surface isn't that how it always is in the fire 
that anger that you thought you dealt with comes up. That bitterness you thought you dealt with comes up. It's always in the fire. You're like, hey, you're a little spicy today. Are you in the fire? That's not usually around you. I always see gold on top. Yeah, something's coming through the surface. The only reason why it's allowed to rise is so we could remove it. Don't leave it. Don't let it cool and stay. Oh, that's still there? Oh, I get that out of my life. Why? Because I'm purifying this gold. I'm, I'm making the fire worth it. You want the fire to be worth it or do you want to go back in the fire? I'm going to make this fire worth it. Okay, there's that anger. That's, there's that offense. There's that hurt. There's, whenever something comes up, that's because you're in the fire and God is in the process in your life. And he's refining you. He's pulling the intense thing, the, the other metals out. And he's purifying you. He's skimming it off and burning it away. And all that's left is the pure gold to be poured into molds God doesn't want to just create the liquid gold in your life he wants you to become molded in his image he's pouring you into the mold of his son he said I can't work with lukewarm molds I need you to be hot mm. did you know that gold I asked, I asked Google and chat I said tell me some things about gold I didn't know and it told me that gold is actually unlike other elements on this earth. I didn't know this. It was actually something I didn't know, and maybe you know, but you didn't know. Gold is not naturally formed on our planet, is what it says. Instead, gold is created in space. And it's because of cataclysmic events most scientists believe that gold is pr produced through nuclear fusion in stars. More spectacularly, during neutron star explosions. So gold is not made here, it's made in space. And then comes and lands on our planet. When they find gold, they've basically found the explosion of a comet they found God's science experiment. Gold does not tarnish like other metals. Gold does not rust, does not corrode or tarnish over time. That's why it's been made highly valuable. Mm. It's also the most malleable metal in all the earth. When God refines you, he can mold you and make you. But if there's other metals in there, there's no bending. And God has got you on his potter's wheel and he's not just making a pot, he's making a gold pot. See, look, the older I get, the more I want to just bend in his hands. Oh, you were using me that way as a vessel before? Remake me anew, God. How do you, how do you want me to serve you, God? Each season, you're, you're being molded in a new way. You're, look, if you're really doing this right, every time you're in here, you're saying, Word of God, mold me. Holy Spirit, put your hands on me. Remove any impurity. I've been through the fire. And I don't want to go through the fire for no reason. Make the fire count, God. Remove the impurities. Mold the gold. Mold it. Gold is rare. It's rare. They, they say if they took all the gold, they would only fill up a few swimming pools. It's rare. What God is doing in your life is rare. Don't, don't throw it away. Don't look at it as usual. This is not just one of the things you do is be a Christian. I'm a Christian and I do all these 15 things. No, I'm a believer. That, that's it. That's the main thing. I am a son and a daughter of God. I am his gold treasure. He gave up everything to buy the field to find me. He dug into the dirt and earth and crushed everything that was crushing me and put me in the fire with his Holy Spirit. It's constantly purifying my heart. You know what the most cool thing I think, I don't know about gold, I just thought this was cool. 
is it said it's surprising. Most people don't know this, but gold is also found in trace amounts in living organisms, especially the human body. In fact, we're not even sure why it's there because it has no biological function. And most gold that's found in your body and mine is found in our blood. <laughs> you have royalty in your blood, in your DNA. Oh, I love that we don't just have our blood, but we've been covered in the blood of Jesus. How much gold did he have in his blood? And the other place they find the gold in the human body is in your hair. Some of us have more gold than others. I've been saving that joke all day. In the tissues of your hairs. Look at this Luke, 20, Luke, Luke 12, 7. They, I don't know if they'll have it, but they have it. Wow, you guys are ahead of me. You see where I'm going. You see how I work. My brain, it's weird. But Luke 12, 7, it says, but even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye of more value than many sparrows. God says, look, why did he number our hairs? Because there's even gold in your hair. God has created you. Why would you ever give him half of you? If I give anybody all of me, yet fail to give him all of me. If you did your marriage half, would it survive? If you did your business half, would it survive? If you did your health halfway in and halfway out, would it survive? Then why do we think our faith will survive the duration of our life by just, uh, I'm just here? No, we gotta repent again, come back to our first love and say, God, I'm going. I'm going to give you all of me. Use me as your vessel, whatever, whenever. God, I don't want to be your roommate. I want to be in a love, intimate relationship with you. And I want everyone I know to be able to have access to you. And Lord, you're knocking on their hearts, but they can't hear you. So God, I'm going to be your voice. I'm going to be your vessel. I'm going to be your life. Come on, would you bow your heads all over this room? God wanted to remind you today of the royalty he's placed inside you. And maybe the fire you've walked through has made you indifferent to God. It's made you deconstruct everything you once believed. But God is calling you home. He's calling you back.